don't have any in person, so we'll move on to informational. We don't have any signed up online, saying none in person. Questions from the committee, and let's be nice. Representative Regeer. <laughs> Question for the sponsor, please. Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Vice Chair Regeer. Representative, or Mr. Chair, Representative Dunwell, you referred to hate groups. Can you please define for me not who a hate group is, but what is a hate group? Um, may I uh, redirect, please, to Mr. McAdam? No, no, she asked you, and she no. wants your opinion. You. What is a hate group? A hate group is a group that uh, harasses, threats, terrorizes, um, to the likes of stories that we, we heard some of the proponents tell just, just here this evening. Thank you. And and Mr. Chair, I would I would like to redirect because I'm I'm basically the messenger. I feel um, Representative Dunwell, you've already asked that. I already said no. She wanted your opinion and that's all she asked. It's her prerogative whether she can direct redirect. Hmm. Next question. Thank you. Representative Skees. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question uh, for, for the bill sponsor. Mr. Chair, Representative Dunwell, so the definition you just gave us on hate group, Black Lives Matter and Antifa fall under that exact same example. So why didn't you include them in this bill? Or a resolution, I should say. Well, m Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Skees, uh, for one thing, uh, Antifa is not a recognized organization of, of terror by the federal law enforcement agencies, FBI, Homeland Security. Um, and that's one reason. Two, it's outside the title of the bill and uh, it would substantially change the substance of the bill, which is to address recognized white supremacist white nationalist neo-nazi groups as domestic terrorist groups follow up, and their please. activities as do domestic terrorism follow, follow up, up please mr chair mr chair representative dunwell could you please name me one white supremacist group in montana proud boys mr chair um follow up mr, mr. chair follow up uh, representative dunwell where are the proud boys headquartered in montana Uh, I can't specify. I I don't I don't know exactly. Uh, I would like to redirect no, to an you. expert, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would no like thanks. To redirect I... to Mr. McAdam, please. Again, Representative Dunwell, that's the prerogative of the person asking the question. They wanted your answer, not someone else's. Mr. Mr. Chair, point of personal privilege. If the intent of Okay, now you're muted and I will speak. And if you continue, I'll just drop you off the call. It's your choice. Are you done? As the sponsor, you do not have a point any point of privilege it's not appropriate in this committee it's not appropriate as you as the sponsor are we clear go ahead do you have a further question uh, mr chair i do and i don't want to continue to fan the flames but this i don't understand how one we should never trust anything out of the southern poverty law center that's kind of a joke but my last question then for the for the bill sponsor is um, basically, I asked you where there was a white supremacy group. You didn't really answer. Then uh, I was going to ask you where there's a neo-Nazi group. But really, the big question I want to know is where are they, both those groups, performing terrorist acts in Montana where people are being terrorized? Could you give me some specific examples, please? She 
She's, you're still muted. You can unmute yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'm not muting myself. I don't know. No, how I going. muted you. I asked you to unmute yourself. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. We have seen ra racist, harassing literature being spread throughout Montana, in the Flathead, in Missoula, Bozeman, Livingston, Billings, Helena, my home Helena, and other communities. Just a few examples of, of what we've seen over the years. Mr. Chair, can I have one final follow-up? <laughs> One follow. Uh, thank up. you. Uh, Representative Dunwell, we heard a testimony. Basically, if you're wearing a camouflage outfit and you're carrying a lawful weapon to have if you're not a felon, and you're handing out literature that doesn't comport with maybe your perspective, that's terrorist activity? I don't see the need for this bill at all. Mr. Chair, was that a question? It was. I'm sorry, I don't see the question in that. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Dunwell, I'll clarify. Um, we've, I just asserted that basically what you're saying is by going by what's in the news, when there's rallies, which we call freedom rallies, and there's folks dressed up in camouflage that are wearing or, or have on their person firearms, which is entirely their legal right to own in the state of Montana, and they're maybe handing out literature based on things that they see as freedom, are you calling that hate and or a terrorist act? Seems like that's your only examples you have. So I'm curious, are those terrorist acts? When they're done, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Representative Skies, when that propaganda is distributed covertly, clearly to harass and to instill fear in the recipient, and to disturb their everyday functioning. That is how terrorists work, to instill. I didn't do that. <laughs> Unmute, yeah, I don't know how that. Oh, was. okay. That was, so did I you didn't hear, do that, did it was you, accidental if, if it was. Did you hear any of that? Um, so, after the instilling fear, covertly handing out items to instill fear. Right. Yeah. So, so it, the, the fact that these groups exist, that, that is free speech. If the activities, however, and the threats and the harassment and the intimidation and in some cases the violence that is when it becomes domestic terrorism. When those leaflets are not handed face to face, but when they are covert to instill fear, that is the terrorism. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Dummo. Representative Bishop. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Question for Mr. McAdam. I, I actually I have to ask you to speak up because I didn't even hear what you said. Question Sorry. for Mr. McAdam. Mr. McAdam. Uh, Chairman Usher, Representative Bishop. Thank you, Mr. McAdam, Mr. Chair. Mr. McAdam, I'm aware of um, recent incidents in my home community of Livingston that targeted Jewish members of my community. Thankfully, my family was not amongst those. Um, but I wonder if you are aware of that incident or if there are other incidents that you're aware of that you could share that have been recent in our state. And Chairman Usher, Representative Bishop, yes. So I am um, a little bit familiar um, with what you're talking about happen, happening in Livingston. Um, and I think this goes back to a little bit of what the sponsor was discussing um, around the impact that in, in the case of Livingston and, and with what we've seen um, in frankly many communities in the last year and a half or so of um, anti-Semitic literature being distributed in communities under the cover of night. Um, and I think that as the sponsor said, 
the 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 issue with that is and i i liked her description of you know the difference between being handed a flyer being handed a pamphlet um and you know being a jewish family that wakes up in the morning and finds anti-semitic literature on their doorstep um and the precise reason that these literature drops tend to be done at night um is very much with a specific reason of threatening um, and and basically trying to promote fear in the community that, that's targeted. And, and in this case, you know, this was anti-Semitic literature. We've also seen very, um, you know, racist literature, in some cases, literature that does come from uh, white nationalist groups like, um, oh, you know, and I, I would say that these groups, you know, the names, um, the World Church of the Creator, also known as the Creativity Movement, um, and others that are affiliated with with both national white nationalist groups and groups that have presence here in Montana. But that, yeah, the the goal of those is to um, one promote fear in the communities that are targeted, um, and two to send a very clear message or to try to send a very clear message. Um, that those people, those communities who are targeted are not welcome and don't belong in our communities. Um, I think I mentioned during my, during my testimony made reference to the Nazi troll storm um, in 2016 and 2017. That was definitely a case where members of the Jewish community were receiving phone calls that were where the, the callers were threatening bodily harm to family members and to children. Um, and so it's it's not just kind of literature drops that, that have happened here in Montana, but other instances too of, um, you know, threats of bodily harm um, and destruction of property that, that, that we've seen during our time doing the, doing the work. Thank you. That'll work, thank you. Um, Representative Bergley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Question for the bill sponsor. Go Mr. Ahead. Chair, um, Representative yes. Dunwell, um, it's been brought up several Mr. times Chair. that uh, Montana has the highest percentage or largest number of groups that fall into the categories under this bill. Could you provide us with a list or where you're getting the information citing those groups? Oh, um, Mr. Chair, Representative Bergley, yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I am just uh, quoting an article that I believe came out two weeks ago in 24-7 uh, Wall Street. Um, it's a financial online publication, very well thought of, and that the their report said Montana tops the list of states with the most hate groups per capita. Would you be able to provide us with a link or a copy of that article, Mr. Chair? Representative? Sure, sure. Um, uh, or you could Google it just like I Googled it. But we, um, He asked you to send us a link, please. Sure. Thank sure, you. I'd be happy to. Representative Skies, if you could be nice. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the admonition. I do have a question for Mr. McAdams. And um, Mr. Chair, Mr. McAdams, on these on this literature drop that you're referencing, um, that happened in the dark of the night. Did 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 the people who dropped it leave uh, information as to who they were? I mean, was there uh, this is from the Proud Boys, or how do you know that it was a white racist that came in the night and dropped that off at the door? Uh, Chairman Usher, Representative Skies. Um, so with the incident in Livingston, um, I do have to say that there, this, this was a literature drop that did not have a specific group or organization designation on it. Um, and so um, in that case, um, you know, while we can't necessarily be sure, um, we have seen in the past where um, you know, white nationalist groups or individual activists have kind of gone on road trips in Montana and, and will drop the same lit in three or four communities. Um, and that was what happened this time. The, the literature that was dropped in Livingston was also dropped in 
uh, Missoula and Butte. But in this case, there wasn't a group affiliation sort of on it. Um, but as I mentioned in, in other cases, you know, over the last year, year and a half, um, we have seen, uh, you know, the literature drop that does reference specific white nationalist groups. Uh, follow up, please, Mr. Chair. Follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McAdams. So you don't know who dropped those literatures off, and you're saying that it might have happened in the past, so therefore you think these are the same thing. Um, could you tell me this, sir? Um, in our proponent list today, if, if this is so prevalent as you and the sponsor say, then why, where's law enforcement today? Where's the Department of Justice? Where's our Attorney General? If this is such a horrible thing and it, it's, it's affecting all these people and these people are scared and intimidated and, and there's all this violence, why didn't we have a single law enforcement group come before us today and say, this is desperately needed, we're having a huge battle against these white supremacists and these neo-Nazis? Why is that absent from this testimony? Uh, Chairman Usher, Representative Skies, the, the short answer is I don't know, um, but I will say, as I referenced in my testimony, um, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI, um, both under the current and the previous administrations, came out um, and made statements about white nationalist groups being um, at least, if not the biggest, one of the biggest threats um, to the country. So. I mean, uh, while I can't speak as to why, you know, Montana law enforcement isn't here, um, this is an issue that, you know, law enforcement um, nationally has, has taken a stance on. And it's, it's an issue that, um, you know, we work with law enforcement around these issues in Montana. So um, I, I guess I, I would say I, I wouldn't necessarily take uh, there not being representation in the room on this specific resolution to mean that law enforcement does not take these matters seriously. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. McAdams. Representative Hankel. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the sponsor. Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Hankel. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Dunwell. Um, I guess the first question I just wanted to clarify, I, I see the language in here on page one, basically lines 18 through 24, and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security saying that they've conducted more lethal attacks than, than any other group, or is it lethal attacks? Yeah, more lethal attacks. But has the do, uh, the uh, Department of Homeland Security? Y you said in a in a former answer to a question that they have already labeled them a domestic terrorist group. Is that factual? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, um, Representative, um, could you clarify who they are, please? Uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Dunwell, they being the Department of Dem uh, Department of Homeland Security, being they, have they actually come out and labeled this is a domestic terrorist group? Which group, sir? Uh, white Mr. white Chair. supremacy or neo Nazis? Oh yes, oh yes, absolutely. In their in their threat assessment from uh, October of 2020. Uh, follow up, Mr. Chair. Follow up. Uh, okay, so why doesn't that say that in the bill? It, it, des it describes their conclusion as in their acts, but why doesn't it say in the bill that they have labeled them a domestic terrorist group? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, um, Representative, um, I be happy to uh, support an amendment. It would be a friendly amendment. Okay, I, I got like another uh, follow-up, Mr. Bill. Chair. And in, right. fact, in fact, follow-up, follow up. Uh, oh. Rep, uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Dumwell. Um, so the language in here is they have, you know, conducted more lethal attacks, or they have um, basically terrorized. Um, uh, I guess areas, cities, peoples more than any other, but would you agree that um, any domestic violence and threatening behavior, behavior is unacceptable? Ms. Mr. Chair? 
if it terrorizes another person, Mr. Chair, Representative, I would say. I mean, I think we're off the bill, though. Uh, Mr. I mean, Chair, we're, we're right on the, the bill. We're talking bill. about the language here. And so, I'm, Mr. Chair, Representative, what I'm trying to ask is, the language here is they have conducted more of this or more of that. But what I'm asking you is any acceptable, any domestic violence acceptable and any threatening behavior acceptable, in your opinion? In my opinion, no. Thank if you. Then one last follow-up, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. So with that, uh, Representative Dun Mr. Chair, Representative Dunwell, you know, we're looking at, you know, we have a long history of white supremacy and neo-Nazi that goes back into the days of the Ku Klux Klan. However, nowadays we do have Antifa that's been burning our cities on the news uh, consistently all year long. And uh, even though the neo-Nazis and the white supremacy have been around for a longer period of time and there has been more domestic violence uh, based on that length of time, would you, in your opinion, would you be open to, and I know you, you, you answered the question why Antifa is not in the bill, but would you be open to including Antifa because of their acts this year that we have all seen, and in the nexus with, uh, or the melding of BLM, would you be willing to insert that into the bill because you oppose any domestic violence and targeting behavior as unacceptable? Well, Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Hinkle, th that is totally outside the, the title of the bill, and, 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 and so that was, not, a yes. that was a yes or no. And, and it go, goes, it is not in the substance of the bill. The substance of the it, bill it's a deals yes or no. with white supremacists, white nationalists, that was a yes and or no question. groups. Um, we are not talking about... That was about a yes or no question, ma'am. Okay. Further questions? Um, I actually have some questions. Imagine that. Seeing no further questions, I've got a couple questions. My question is to the sponsor. Did you get together with the sponsor, Representative Mitchell, on the other bill, very similar, to see if the two of you could work together across party lines and get one bill that would have been against all domestic terrorists groups that you all define? Mr. Chair, if you will let me answer, Antifa has nothing to do with the content of this resolution. That's not the question I just that, asked you. That's not the question I asked. Therefore, this will close the hearing on House Bill, or House Joint Resolution 12. Um, we'll open executive action on House Joint Resolution 12. Vice Chair Regeer. Mr. Chair, I move House Joint Resolution 12 do pass. Any discussion? Representative Phelan. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move to table. I substitute motion to table, please. Non-debatable non motion. Can we do a voice vote? No. Okay, let's do a uh, roll call vote. Vice Chair Aguirre? Yes. Vice Chair Kelker? No. Representative Carlson? Yes, by proxy. Representative Stromswold? No.